Hello everybody, Driven by Moss 18.5 is out and it's all about some news for the Launchpad. What I show here on the Launchpad Mark III applies to all supported Launchpads, except one little feature, which is now that the click button here is lit if you press shift. So here you can toggle click and then if you press shift again, you see the state of the metronome. So then this button is lit in green. But all the other features I show now also work on the launch pads I support with Driven by Moss. So the first thing to look into is that you have now more configuration options for the record button or with other launch pads without these buttons. You have that on shift, the two record buttons. They also have these configuration options. So if you go now to settings, to the settings of the Launchpad Pro, there you see here with transport, you have two settings, one for the record button and one for the shifted record button or in the shift mode for the other launch pads, it's the two buttons here below. So you have now many, many options. You can say you want to record in a ranger in the clip. What is new here that you can combine it with enable the automation as well because there is no dedicated automation button here to record automation. So you can say, for example, you want to have here the record arranger plus enable automation. And for that, we want to have a new clip also with enabled automation. If I press here the record button, it will now also enable automation. Same works in the clip. So if you press here, new clip, it will also enable the automation writing. But the most interesting thing in this update is that you can now edit notes in sequences, which was so far not possible. If you go here into a sequencer, for example, the normal note sequencer, you can as usually enable a note. So maybe let's start playback on that. You can also change the length. And you can also now long press the note and release it. And then you enter note editing mode. In note editing mode, you have eight parameters and another one here on the button. So nine parameters, which you can change. So let's start with that one. That one mutes the note. So maybe let's select the note so you see that better. So you see here it's now muted and I can also unmute it again. Let's go to the column. So the first column is velocity. So you can increase here the velocity to 100%. Interesting to notice that you can also have this movement. So I can press it softly and the velocity will go down. Okay, it doesn't make too much sense on velocity, but maybe more on the other gain and stuff like things if you have a long playing note. You could modify that as well. Also, second one is here velocity spread. So here we have that as well. Next one is chance. So we can decrease the chance that the note is played. Next one is the gain. So you can soften it a bit or make it louder. Also panorama, so you can pan the note to the left. And we have here also pitch. Maybe let's let's hear that what's happening. Let's create a very long note. So you leave this mode when you press again the sequences so you can leave it. Let's create a long lasting note from here to here and let's edit that. And there you can have now the maybe let's pan it to the left. What is the next one? The timbre and the pressure, but these are not mapped to anything. Uh, also, the pitch is not mapped. So these are these MPE values, which you could also map to different parameters or what should it modify. So, and as I already showed, if you want to leave that mode, simply press the sequencer again. And this works for all sequences. For example, if we go here to the drum sequencer, you can create here, for example, a bass drum. Let's play back. So we also have here now this bass drum playing and I can long press that as well and modify then the values of this bass drum hit. For example, if we go back to the drum mode, I could have here four on the floor and I want to make the first one just a little bit louder, then I could do it like this. Just increase the gain or max it out just for demonstration. Maybe not that much. Have it a little bit of accent here. Okay, so this works also nicely and it also works in the poly sequence. So I have already here one on the third track. 
Poly sequencer, if you forgot, it works like this. You play, for example, a chord here, or you can also play one note. It's up to you. Let's do a chord. And then you can enter these chords up there, for example, like this. Funny enough, and here you can also long press it, and there you have these parameters, and they will now work on all the different notes of that step. So if we go here, I think I selected that one, and if you here decrease the velocity, it will decrease for all the notes of that step, and this works also for the other parameters. And again, just click here on Sequencer to leave that mode. Then there is also this feature that you can do note repeats in the sequences by using the up and down cursor keys in combination with a pad. And this is now also working here in the poly sequencer. So for example, if we... Maybe let's do it with that because that one is a little bit longer. And then you press here the up button and then press it several times. You will see now we have two repeats. Maybe let's go with four. Okay, we can go pretty crazy with that one as well. Maybe let's first go to the drum and add maybe some more sounds to it. Let's enter here something else. This will be the next hit. I feel it coming. <laughs> okay, maybe let's remove that one so it's not that bad. And let's go back to the drum. So one last feature, if we go here to the device editing, there are new functions here on the right on the editor. And let's start on the top. So top one disables the device. Maybe we should show the device. If you go here, you see it's enabled, it's yellow, and if it's off, it's just gray. Let's enable it again. And you can also change here the user interface, so you can hide here the remote control buttons, and you can also hide the user interface of the device itself. That one toggles the window, but the drum device does not have a window. Maybe let's go to that one and let's go here. Yeah, but Silla opens the window and you close it back to drum. The bottom one pins the device and not only the device, it also pins the track because pinning only the device does not make too much sense if the track is not also pinned or it will just jump away if you switch the track. You can see that if we open up here that one so if you see i press the button you will see both get pinned so the track and the plugin gets pinned this will work now like this so if i go now for example here click on bacilla or click here it will still stick on the drum device this makes especially sense if you have multiple controllers you can now control your drum device especially with that one So much for the new features of a Launchpad Pro and all the other Launchpads. For example, here also it works nicely on the X. And yeah, I hope you like it, dig it and make some funky music. <laughs>